inspiration for me. I mean, I, I, I think you made one of your films to us a couple years ago, right? Yeah, the stamp collector, the one you played before. Right. So we have the stamp collector here at the Philip Davis Film Festival before. Okay, great. So what was the inspiration for making Castle? For Castle. So for me, Davis was a co-writer on it, uh, right. and the script started the writing stage. Um, my friend here, Tony Salvia, um, I don't know how many years ago that was, we met Frank Capra in New York. Oh. <laughs> the, great, the, great, the great Frank Capra, um, who if you see his films, he made like It's a Wonderful Life. I don't know if any of you guys have seen that. Um, it's like the sweetest film you'd ever see. And um, I was talking to Tony on the, on the phone over the summer, and I was talking about my favorite filmmaker, Stanley Kubrick. Oh, yeah. And I, I was telling, you know, who made 2001 Space Odyssey and Eyes Wide Shut. And Tony said, I don't know why I want to watch his films. I'm not sure what, what I'd get out of them. <laughs> I was doing some more research on Kubrick, and Kubrick talked about Frank Capra, who you met in an interview when he made Full Metal Jacket in 1987. Yeah. And what he said is, I love Frank Capra films. I think they're beautifully made, and I wish life was most like any of them. And I wish everyone was like Jimmy Stewart, but they're not. <laughs> and that, to me, was sort of the, the feeling um, of Capsules. Um, sort of this thing after the pandemic, just sort of our... There's what Kubrick will say, and um, we talk about this in a lot of traditions, and uh, there's something wrong with with, with us, and I wanted to kind of investigate sort of that that part of us. It's such a downer. It's ending, but <laughs> that's, that's what it was. Just to learn about what was, what's wrong about humanity, about friendships, about people, about our society, so on and so forth. How long have you been working? This took a year. Yeah. Oh, you want to talk about you know, this yeah. inspiration? Yeah. I don't really have room trips. That was my first. Yeah, real so how, how, how did you structure that? I mean, so you have been writing to completion or? Uh, uh, yeah, we, we wrote it in September of, of yeah. 2021. Wrote it in like two months. Two months. months. Yeah, it got a four out of 10 on the blacklist. This screenplay got a four out of 10. What's the blacklist? Uh, it's a, um, of course, one of those renowned, uh, they give, they rate screenplays and a lot of people submit their kind of Hollywood scripts there and it's, they get, we've gotten a six so out of ten good. on a different yeah. script. Oh, okay. We got a four out of ten. So if it was a test, we would fail. Oh, okay. So we decided to make the movie. <laughs> well, we spent like two or three years trying to make a different movie, and we yeah, needed yeah. like three hundred thousand dollars to do it. Yeah. And we just like really wanted to make something. Yeah. And so we just sat in the room. It was like right after we realized yeah. we weren't going to get the money, and we were like, Yeah, let's just make something. Yeah. And so we sat yeah. and we came up with the whole story in like two days. Yeah, it was very um, and they just like wrote it, wrote it in like a week or two weeks. Um, some of my friends for a and some of my friends, truthfully, the the emotional part of it, not besides what's wrong with life, really. Some of my friends um, have ended up in AA and talking to them about like they would wake up places where they didn't know where they were because of what they had done the night before and how terrifying that was and how you want to change your life because of that one night. And that to me was kind of the emotional thing with the film is you know. One choice you make, something arbitrary like that, will change your whole life. Uh, was it done after the pandemic or year year? We shot this in February of this year. Yeah, February 22. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. It's a quick turnaround time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's uh, uh. So what? What? What is? So this is the first time you show it to uh, yeah. a lot of the <laughs> first audience. Yeah. You know, you guys have a lot of questions. These are these beautiful people. Hi guys. Uh, really? Film. Thank you for having a show. This has been really cool. Um, I have a question about the music. Um, I know the George is, is here. George, come on. If he has, if he has a talk, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, great work, man. Really, I love it. Um, I guess I, I would ask you, perhaps, as the director, having like interfaced, what what were the kind of like influences that you pointed in his direction? And what George, what did I? I don't think I. I think I was sending you um, Terrence Malick like song to song, like Polish orchestra pieces. It, it went. We talked about a lot. Yeah, we talked about a lot of strange. Um, 
influences. Um, what's something funny? Yeah, yeah, a lot of the Kubrick stuff. Um, come on, we gotta get. There's better stuff than that. Come on, tell me out. Well, you have the good time. Uh, so the woman who did the SFX makeup for that chest piece, which is one of the more impressive parts of the film, she worked uh, the Safdie brothers on uh, Good Time. Hey, yo. And uh, yeah. there, there you go, you got the bar hat. Yeah. And uh, George, you have that, there's a little nod to the Good Time score in the lab scene. Um, and that kind of, the way, there's an interview where Josh Shafty's talking about uh, underscore, there's no such thing. You can't underscore a scene, you have to overscore it. So that was really what we kept doing is, in the mix, we, the mixer's not here, but we kept saying, oh, well, we have to turn the music up, turn the music up, turn the music up, and yeah. So actually, I want to introduce the rest of the group yes, here. So some of you might not know them, so start with Daniel Brennan, we have Josh Shafty, 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 Josh Shafty,
just put some genre elements in there. It's not that inspired, but the inspiration is just trying to do something that's sort of like a paradox combining those two things. Yeah. First of all, thank you for presenting the movie to us tonight. Thank you. Um, would love to hear a statement on, I mean, I graduated college kind of recently too. Um, drug taking in college is way different now. And uh, I think that it is represented on this movie a little bit. Obviously the girl um, had a more joyful approach to it, whereas the guy was a little bit, um, well, this guy, was a little bit like, felt differently about it. Um, I live in Brooklyn. Many young people take drugs without thinking about it uh, pretty often. I'd like to hear um, what went into the story. What, you know, was that something that you guys were trying to tell, yeah. like, you know, with our yeah. generation? Since this is a generational piece. Yeah, I think there were a lot of influences. It's all, like, kind of in some way based off of, like, somebody we know. Yeah. And, and, like, I feel like just know a lot of people that have very various experiences with drugs. Like, I have a lot to ask. Them. Yeah, yeah, there's one specific story where um, my friend, one of his friends, she would, she would sell acid in college, and this one day she was like, she would put the droplets on paper, and she accidentally spilled the whole bottle over, no. and it went under her hand, uh, and like went straight to her bloodstream, what? and her friends didn't know what to do, like they were freaking out, and they had like, locked her in a closet for three days, and she was just tripping for three days straight, oh, and she's just uh, never been the same, okay. and I heard that, and I was like, oh, <laughs> Just like one moment, one moment. Yeah, like stories like that, honestly. Yeah. Okay. Good series. Yeah. Where did you film the movie? Who was it? Where did we film? Princeton, New Jersey. 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 Yeah. Oh. Um, where was your inspiration for... Can I actually have one little addendum to that, too, yeah. with filmmaking? So, we shot it in my hometown. I was born in Princeton. I live close to where um, I was born. And home field advantage when you're making a film like this, where you have no resources, is so crucial because you ask, you know, any, everyone wants to, you know, the, the guy who, the car, that, that green car, he couldn't make it tonight because he had work. But he was going to show up. He got, I love him. Dylan Havens, who's my brother's close friend. You know, it's like, you need a car? Well, there's a guy with a car. You know, it's like that stuff really works itself out when you're on your home turf instead of L.A. or New York or all that stuff. I love it. I love yeah. it. And what was the inspiration? Um, I thought the cinematography was really beautifully shot, really well done. Harrison. If you had any inspiration for how to do it, if it's your personal style. Um, well, I guess Luke and I were kind of talking, like we went through uh, a couple different uh, ideas in pre-production, but ultimately we decided on shooting on relatively inexpensive camera with like two lenses. Um, we didn't really have many lights to work with, um, so if it was a little dim, I promise it was. You know, <laughs> it's okay. Um, uh, anyway, I had one person on crew, and that's Zoe. Um, hey, Zoe! Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, I think it was just uh, rolling with the punches. Um, that's the main thing. Uh, the style is, you know, uh, I guess I, we adapted it for this project and it, yeah. it worked. I, I think a lot of the things that kind of came at us really helped us. Like when they were in the lab, that red glow was like we were walking around in this basement beforehand. I'm like, is there anywhere else we can shoot this? And we walk next door and like, <laughs> There was this really nice, like, what, what was it, a law office? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we walked in, and I'm like, we can make this work. It's a lab. Right, so you saw the red exit yeah, sign. Yeah, we let's saw the red exit sign. We're like, let's just make it really red. Yeah. It'll, it'll be a lab. Um, <laughs> anyway, so, uh, yeah, I, I think it was just mostly we were having Ooh, fun with yeah, it. Shoot from the hip kind of thing. Yeah, like, all those bedroom scenes, they were all in one room. I don't know how many rooms it looked like in the final film. You guys will have to tell us, but, um, <laughs> you know. And it's funny, uh, the corpse we cut open, uh, I've actually shot that twice now. So that's another fun <laughs> thing, yeah. It was a real corpse. No, it's not real. <laughs> <laughs> well, it <laughs> and here he is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> he's, he's cured. I knew it wasn't him, but I just thought it was very interesting. 
we'll be back. back. Yeah, so uh, I was wondering if you had, had taken some inspiration from a scanner darkly, this being Philip K. Dick, mm. Philip Fest, no. the, the famous no, that's a link later film, right? Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Also, I, I, haven't, I haven't seen a scanner dark. I, I don't know. Well, it's the Philip K. Dick novel. I know. Uh, I'm just, like, right. Right. Yeah, so I wondered if there was a link to that. Okay. I'm going to watch it now. Thank you so much for saying that. Scanner darkly, everyone. Appreciate it. And then we have time for one more question. Okay. Who's the next? What's next for everyone? David. Um, I'm planning on going out and having a drink. I have a couple movies coming out too. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, woohoo! Yeah, so, uh, so I see Alison Sanson from Rock Island Heights. So, yeah. Yeah, you know, going to stand here for a little while. That's what I got next, you know. Uh, nothing crazy. Yep. <laughs> we don't really know. So Davis and I want to work on another film. We don't know creatively where we're going yet. Um, I think uh, the thing we learned on this script is, or on this film, is we want to take more time. Yeah, for more than two months with the script. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Me. I, I love shooting stuff, so keep doing it, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take the uh, crew downstairs to the Crown Theater. You can join us there, and then we'll all reconvene at the bar downstairs on the second floor. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.